Hello everyone, thanks for watching. My name is Nathaniel Kramer, also known as Preaching Musician here on YouTube. And today is the beginning of a brand new series that I'm going to be rolling out. And it's about the road to Calvary, taken out of Isaiah chapter 53. And uh, I was going to do a series on faith and I had a couple of other ideas, but I really felt like uh, God wanted me to do this series on the road to Calvary. We really can't get enough of the gospel. We, we can't get enough of understanding and meditating on what Jesus went through on this earth. And so I wanted to focus in on not just the doctrines of salvation, but I wanted to focus in on what he went through for us, what he was willing to, to suffer and endure so that we could have salvation. And so I'm going to be taking the series, as I said earlier, from Isaiah chapter 53, and I'm just pretty much going to be following the outline of the prophecies that are stated here. So we're going to be starting in verse chapter 1, and I'm just going to go ahead and read. It says, Who hath believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. I'm going to focus in on verse, uh, verse 2. It says, For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and, a, and as a root out of a dry ground. Obviously, that's speaking of Jesus there, for he is Jesus, shall grow up before him is his father, as a tender plant, as a root out of, <clears throat> out of a dry ground. The Bible says in John chapter 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. This person called the Word was one with God. He had the majesty of God. He had the power and glory of God. The angels and seraphims continually offered their praise and worship to him on the throne. He had all knowledge, all wisdom, all power, all the adoration he deserved. Anything he declared became so. Anything he willed was obeyed. He reigned as the King of Kings, the omnipotent Creator. He had perfect peace, perfect joy, perfect righteousness, and perfect love. And it was that perfect love that caused him to humble himself. The Bible says of Jesus in Philippians 2, that who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. He went from the throne to the manger, from being known as the Son of God to being known as a bastard. He went from being known as the all-powerful God to being known as a helpless baby, from being known as the Word to being known as Jesus. This man he took on the form of a servant in the likeness of men. The God who had every desire satisfied would now know hunger, thirst, sickness, and weakness. The God who was adored by all around him was now despised and rejected by his own people. He exchanged dignity for humility, power for helplessness, a crown for swaddling clothes, a sinless heaven for a sinful earth. Could you imagine a king on earth doing something like this? Have you ever known a king who lived in luxury his whole life, having servants to fulfill his every whim of desire, only to stoop down to the lowest part of society for 33 years for love for his people? There is only one king who's ever cared enough to do something like that, and his name is Jesus. Also, could you imagine maybe someone like me or someone like you looking at a tribe of worms, living in sewage, living in manure, and saying, I love them so much, I'm going to go down and live with them. Live in their filth. Live in just the, the mire, the muck that they live in. To those worms, maybe it does, it's not a big deal to live in that filth. I mean, they, you know, they've been living there ever since they've been born. But to someone who is a person who likes to keep themselves clean from that kind of stuff, it is just repulsive. It is horrible to do something like that. I, I remember when I was uh, in junior high, I went to camp, and I got a confession. I didn't take a shower, okay? Didn't do it all week. And when I came home, I thought, oh, okay, I don't smell that bad, you know? I, 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 I can't smell anything. But when I came home, man, my parents were like, get in the shower right now. And the reason why was because I got used to it. Over time, that dirt, that disgusting filth, it was no big deal because I... I I got used to it, but my parents, when they first smelled that stench, they could not take it. They, they didn't even want me in the house. They were thinking about hosing me down before I even took a shower. But think about what it was like for Jesus 
when he was in heaven, living in perfect holiness, in a perfect righteous environment. Nobody sinned around him. There was no wrongdoing around him. All that he knew was praises. All that he knew was righteousness and good things. And when he came to earth, the Bible says he was as a root in dry ground. In other words, he lived in dirt. He lived in that filth, in that muck, in that mire of sin. And when he came down, the first time he saw as a person someone doing something wrong towards someone else, he saw evil. He saw people curse him and curse his father. Can you imagine how horrible, how terrible that must have been for him? But he was willing to do that for us. He came from perfect holiness, from perfect power, and he veiled that and took on the form of a servant. He came from commanding everything to be fulfilled to having to have his diaper changed. That's what our Savior did for us. What humility. What love. If that's the only thing he did, if, if he didn't die for us, if he didn't do anything else for us, if that's all he did for us, what an amazing Savior we have. And uh, think about that this week. I hope that it encourages you to love him more, maybe to think about him a little more and appreciate him more. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you.